inside. The lower coulee. Lower Grand Coulee. Lower Grand Coulee. Oh, well, we have a channel. Water's flowing through it. Yeah. Around the wetted rim, there's going to be the greatest friction. Right. right? Okay. So, and in the middle, <coughs> basically, the water is flowing with the with the least friction. Right. So it's flowing faster. Right. As you the, move away, faster in the middle. Faster as you move away from the wetted perimeter. Okay. Okay. So now, you know how a, a typical cataract has the horseshoe shape. Yes. Well, that's because the horseshoe is the inversion of the of the flow velocity. So in other words, here's a cross section. Let's say the water is flowing this way. Yeah. It's flowing faster in the middle. And then it diminishes in volume as you move towards the, the edges of the flow. So what it does is it erodes faster in the middle yeah. and slower towards the edges. And yeah. that's what leaves the classic horseshoe profile. Okay. Also, now here we see we've got this like this. Yeah. So as the water begins to slow down, there's frictional energy losses against the side of the channel. Yeah. And so not only does it deposit on the bottom, it just, it piles this, the sediment up along the flanks of the channel. Right, see? right. So that's all this stuff you see here. All that is stuff that was trained within the water flow yeah. at one point. Yeah. Then when the water began to decline down, it just left this stuff piled up against the flanks of the channel. Right, right. So that, so it's not callous in the ordinary sense. No. Because callus well, typically, the, as the callus accumulates, the cliff recedes. Yes. Because it's material falling off the cliff. This is not callus in that sense. Yeah. So is, is, when you say it's not callus, you mean it's been it's been dumped there? It's been dumped there by the water. Right. It's been dumped there, washed, in effect, up on the sides by right. the water. Right. And the sheer, the sheer edge is because that, that has left a... That's, a, that's one flow of... Of uh, igneous rock, which is basalt, yeah. basalt, which but it has stripped off the flow that was on top of it. Is that what yeah, it? The, the, the horizontal shelf yeah. would have been one flow. Yeah, and it apparently was a fairly fluidized flow because it was able to self-level. Right. Another flow comes in on top of it. Now you have a bedding plane, yeah. which is a zone of weakness. Yeah. The friction of the of the moving water starts plucking this stuff, and it plucks it right on that bedding plane. Right. So it is left. Now, had the flood continued beyond, well, you can see up there. You see what happens to the to the integrity of the shell. Yeah. It starts breaking up. Yes. And had the water continued flowing, then it would have gone to work on this. Right. So you got to realize there's the process, and then there's the end of the process. Yeah. So as the flood waters, as the spigots are turned off, the flood water dissipates, then it just it's, leaves it at whatever stage of erosion it was at. Right, right. So see, Grand Coulee was one of the great flows feeding down into Pasco Basin. Yeah. One of five. Right. Moses Coulee was another one. Yeah. The Columbia, west of here, was another discharge uh, conduit. Yeah. Um, the Telford's Gambling Track east of here, and then the Cheney Blues to the east of there, and then the Snake River was carrying huge volumes of water. And all of those were feeding into Pasco Basin. So that's Pasco Basin now fills up, and its only outlet is through Walula Gap. So then as the waters rise, it's forcing the water under great pressure through Walula Gap. The turbulence was, the, 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 was um, indicated by those great round pools we yeah. saw. And then everything from there had to go down to Columbia Gorge. The carrying material, and as, as it opened up into the Portland Basin, all that stuff dumped. So under Portland is 400 feet of probably, what is that, 20 by 20, probably several thousand, several thousand square miles. Yeah. Several thousand square miles of material. Um, it's going to be a finer material than we saw at the Prada fan That's simply right. because it, it was carried part of it. Yeah. But as we saw at the waterfalls, there was tremendous erosional work done all the way down from the core. Right. And we saw a lot of 
Montreal Falls. Again, the indication of the intense turbulence of the watch. It, it's an undercut so overhang the salt cliffs. So, Ramble, the, the reason that it's here rather than somewhere else is because there was a fault line here or something. There was a, the, the, it was easier for the water to cut this than yes. something else. You'll see that the cliffs on the west are higher than the cliffs on the east. Right. The pre-flood topography, yeah. the dip, okay, was from west to east. It was sloping down like this. Because yeah. we're actually standing in a monocline. Right. And a monocline is a single fold upwards yeah. in the bedrock. So it folds up, and as yeah. it folds up, it cracks and fractures along that fold line. Right. So right there, that creates a zone of, of weakness. Right. And as soon as that water coming across, we saw, I showed you where the upper cooling is actually coming at an angle to the monocline. Yeah. As soon as it hits the uh, monocline, it starts following the monocline. Right. Now, Brett saw, and when we get up there, it should make more sense to you, that when the water first hit the monocline, it formed a 900 foot, five mile wide waterfall. Right. And then that receded as it pours over the lip. Yeah. What it does is it pours, it flux material. Yeah. As it flux, the, the cataract, the, the cliff of the cataract recedes. Recedes. Yes, yes that's yes. a receding cataract. Yeah. Grand Coulee, the whole, this whole thing here is a receding cataract form. I see, interesting point. Right. right. Yeah. It, it ate its way back. Ate its way back, yes. Yeah. The source of this water, I think, is controversial. Right. It's assumed, I think, kind of implicitly without actually getting into the details of it that, that this came somehow from western montana yeah but when you look at the configuration of the ice i don't think so i think it came north of here out of canada right again i can show you the pictures better the word the term supra glacial means flowing on the glacier just a subglacial beneath yeah. end glacial meaning end glacial is within the glacier I think this was super super glacial waters. Right. I think the water's rushing over the top of it. There was actually two lobes that came together, the Okanagan lobe and the Columbian lobe. And where they met, it created sort of a trough that they called interlobe. I think that served to channelize the super glacial waters. And right at that point where those the Okanagan lobe is like this, the Columbian lobe is like this, there's the head of Grand Coulee. You see feeding right into it, yeah. yes. So 